In this video, I'm going to show you how I went from here to here with my raw edit workflow and the portion of that workflow that uses Lightroom Classic and Topaz Photo AI. Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. About three weeks ago, I put out a video in which I show you in detail my workflow, how I use Lightroom Classic and why, and where I use my four favorite plugins to augment Lightroom Classic. Last week, I put out a video on a portion of that workflow that uses Lightroom Classic coupled with DxO Pure Raw 2. And today, we'll cover the portion that uses Topaz Photo AI. But a very quick review, and you can see the video that I first mentioned up here on the upper right. And also you'll find it at the end of this video in the suggestions. When I first look at an image, I divide it into one of three buckets. You know, images that have great focus and very little noise and the light is good. Images that have great focus but may have medium or high noise or perhaps they're dark. And the last bucket is the soft focus images regardless of noise and light. And it is for that bucket that we are going to do this video today. And basically, for those images, I'm going to send the raw file to Topaz Photo AI as a plugin. Topaz Photo AI supports a raw workflow. And I can send the raw and get a DNG in return that is going to keep all the characteristics of a raw file. After I come back from Topaz, I do my global edits in Lightroom Classic. I then evaluate the image to see if there are any issues I need to fix on the image and whether I can fix them in Lightroom or I send them to Photoshop to do a return trip to Photoshop and I do my final edits. And at the end, for a handful of images, I use either Nick Color Effects to give the image something special or if I want to convert the image to black and white, I use Nick Silver Effects. Today's image is this beautiful Sun Hill train flying towards me, taken at Bosque del Apache on a very cold morning. You can actually see a ice bracelet in one of the legs. And this is the image that we're going to be editing today. Now, this image was taken at an ISO 1250. So if I zoom in, you're going to see there is a little bit of noise. Not much. I ISO 1250 with the R5. The R5 actually does a pretty good job. I could have dealt with this noise in Lightroom okay, but to pass, I think it's going to do a better job anyway. But if we look here primarily at the eyes and the head of the crane, the image is a little bit out of focus. Modern cameras are doing a much better job on locking on our subjects and using artificial intelligence to do that. But when the subject is moving fast and especially moving towards us, the cameras have somewhat of a challenge in time keeping the focus accurate. So this image is just a touch soft on the head of this screen. As I show you in the workflow, this is an image that is soft. The light is fine. I'm going to go to Topaz and to do that, I go to File, Plugin Extras, Find Topaz Photo AI, it says Process with Topaz Photo AI. This is going to send the raw image directly to Topaz and opens Topaz. I'm going to move the window. I'm going to zoom where we can see it. And it's, you know, very quickly analyzing the image and applying the automatic corrections that it thinks are going to be appropriate. If we look on the right, it says it detected the subject and it created automatic mask for it. The mask is not perfect. Actually, it did an OK job. And Topaz, you know, give us an AI brush to modify the mask. Frankly, that AI brush soon is work and I hope that Topaz is going to improve it and also give us the option for a regular brush. But it says that is removing moderate raw noise and also sharpening the subject. If we go below, we see the raw remove noise section and we open it. The little green dot means it was selected by the autopilot and it selected the normal model with a strength of one, almost no strength. But if we look at the image before and after, 
it did a great job in removing all the noise. Now, this image didn't need a lot of strength or noise removal, but you know, it gave us a very nice image. And when you evaluate, you need to look at the areas like between the feathers and close areas, because earlier versions of Topaz and DxO and all these tools they use AI used to have a hard time with areas that were somewhat enclosed. So this one did a pretty good job. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and it's gonna generate a new preview and it actually works pretty fast. If we open the sharpen area, we see that it's selected. The green dot tell us that it was the automatic selection. Selected the standard model out of the three models with a strength of seven and a clarity of 20. And also it's applying the correction for sharpening only to the subject, not to the background. As we can see, the results on the head of the crane are not very good. Why? Because for this image, I think the AI in Photo AI is looking at the whole bird. And my primary interest is on the head, on the neck of the bird. That's what we want to get a little bit sharper. The option that I have is to increase the strength. I'm going to go up a bit. It's going to recalculate. It did a little better on the head but I don't like what it's doing to the body, right? He added these very strong lines right here where the wing meets the body of the crane. So that one is not working. One choice is to change the model. I'm gonna go to lens blur and I can select as well, has a strength of 23. And I think it did a better job, but that level of correction was too much. I'm gonna reduce it something like 10 or 11 points, let it calculate. And it's still a little bit strong. So I'm gonna come down a little bit more, something like about eight points. And I think that one is looking better. I'm primarily looking at the head and the neck of the crane. Another option is to look at the motion blur because the crane was moving towards me and also I'm gonna keep a strength that is very low and let it calculate. And you just have to evaluate the different models. Sometimes the automatic selection does a great job. Other times you just have to go in and play with the different models. And this one I think is the best balance right there. So motion blur at the strength of seven. Another choice that we have is whether we want the sharpening applied only to the subject or to the whole image. The masks look okay, but there were a couple sections of the wings that were not selected. So I'm going to deselect subject only and basically apply it to the whole image. The image on the back is already quite a bit out of focus and actually Topaz does a very good job of keeping it out of focus. We could create a mask where we apply the correction only to the head and to the neck of the crane. But as I was telling you earlier, the brush in Topaz still doesn't work very well for my liking. So for now, let's leave it the way it is. To go back to Lightroom, all I had to do is click save and that's going to generate a DNG. It's going to take about 10, 15 seconds to take me back to Lightroom. I'm not going to do that because I already have a DNG created for this image. So let's go to Lightroom. So this is the DNG that came back. This is the original and this is the one that came back. And if we zoom in, you're going to see we don't have any noise and we have a sharper bird. One thing that we have to keep in mind is I didn't apply any lens corrections in Topaz. Topaz does offer that option. I don't like to use the lens corrections in Topaz because I still don't know how well they work compared to what is available in Lightroom. So in Lightroom, I go under lens corrections and I enable profile corrections. And there is an issue when the files come back, sometimes it cannot read the information from the file. So you have to tell it the type of lens that you're using. In this case, I'm using a Canon lens. And as soon as I tell it I have a Canon lens, it was able to read the rest of the information. It knows it was a EF500 on a Canon 
R5 camera and apply the appropriate correction. So this is without the correction and this is the correction. It not only fixes distortion due to the optics, but it also fixes the light or distribution around the image. First things on the edit, global edits. And my first global edit is going to be to crop this image. I'm going to keep the two by three aspect ratio. I don't want to have the part quite center. Maybe here on this side, you can turn the lights off in Lightroom with the letter L. I want to give the room some room on the left. And that's my crop. Now I'm going to look at my basic edits and the image is too yellow for my liking. So I'm going to cool it down a bit. Exposure looks fine. I'm going to increase the exposure. I'm looking primarily at the background. I'm going to bring the highlights up, shadows down a bit. The whites I'm going to bring up a little bit and the blacks I think look fine right there. So the image is already looking much better. Next in my workflow is to look at any distractions. And this image looks actually very clean, right? I don't need to go to Photoshop to do anything. But if I open the, the heel brush section and I visualize spots, there are some spots here at the bottom, probably water droplets. So I'm going to get rid of them close that. So now the image is really, really clean. Next step in my workflow is to do my local edits. In local edits, you have to keep in mind that our eyes are guided by light, color, and detail. Light, color, and detail. I'm going to create a mask. I go to the mask using subject. Lightroom did a great job of selecting a mask. Always pay attention to the mask. You want to refine it. Here's a few areas on the feathers and here on the legs that went over. So I'm going to subtract with the brush and I'm going to do it fast. You know, you, I recommend you really take your time in refining your mask so that the edits that you do, especially the edits are strong, stay only on the sock. Now I'm going to add a little bit with the brush to this area right here on the top of that wing. I went over and now I'm going to fix it and let's say that's an appropriate mask. What do I want to do to the bird? Well, remember light, color, and detail. On light, I'm going to increase the exposure just a tad. That's too much. I think I'm going to go with the highlights a little bit. I want to give it a little more brightness to the highlights. I'm going to bring the whites just a little bit down so I retain detail on this portion of the wing. And in presence, I'm going to give it a touch of texture that enhances the feathers and a touch of clarity. In detail, well, this bird is already quite a bit sharp, so I'm going to bring it to 100% and give it a little bit more sharpness. That's going to enhance the edges. And I think that's it for this part. Now I'm going to create another mask and you know, something very nice on these birds is the red forehead. So I'm going to create a new mask with a brush and I'm going to go up to hundred percent and I'm going to paint here on the forehead, the red forehead. And on that red forehead, I'm going to give it a little more exposure, make it a little brighter. And in color, I'm going to increase the saturation of the red forehead. One more thing that is unique about this image is this eye strength. So I'm going to go 100% and I'm going to create another mask with a brush. I'm going to paint it on the eye strength. You can take your time. And on that one, what I'm going to do is under tone, I'm going to increase the highlights and perhaps the whites and a little bit of the exposure. And in presence, I'm going to give it a lot more clarity to get the texture. 
So we did, you know, three different masks. If I turn off all the masks that was before, and this is after, right? We, we gave the bird more detail, more light. We enhance the forehead and we enhance the eyes bracelet that this bird is wearing. So we close the mask section. Finally, I always like to do a vignette. So I go to the effects section and I'm going to do a slight vignette. I like to keep it between eight, minus eight and minus 12 points, something like that. And the image is complete. So let's compare and I get rid of the panels. So this is the completed image and this is the original image. The original image was a lot more yellow and it lacked detail. Now this is the original after Topaz by the way and this is the completed image after we did our global and local edits. Well amigos I hope you like this video on my portion of my workflow that uses Lightroom Classic and Topaz Photo AI. I'm going to leave you here with the two videos I mentioned earlier with my complete workflow and the portion that uses the Excel Pure Pro. And if you're liking these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, help me grow the channel, give me a thumbs up, send me your comments, and I'll see you next time.